Get over here, guys. You need to listen to this. In China, if you're a woman, single, and over 30, you are called 剩女, which means leftover woman in Mandarin. I have to live in this space of survival and beast mode. Like, I have to live in my masculine energy. Men are always like, oh my goodness, like we're attracted to strong, independent women. But then they get with one and they realize, like, these women, us women, we're surviving. Oh God, dating is a freaking disaster. It's not a place you actually want to be in your 50s. They all go for the younger women. Hey everyone, welcome back to Ugly Truths. Today, we're uncovering some of the wildest and most cringeworthy moments from the dating world. From a dramatic mix-up involving a gas hose to self-image delusions and the absurdities of modern dating standards, you won't want to miss this. Watch till the end and drop your thoughts in the comments. Hit subscribe to help us grow and keep the content coming. Let's dive in. Oh God, dating is a freaking disaster. It's not a place you actually want to be in your 50s. They all go for the younger women. So my dating puddle, even though I'm, I think I'm pretty smart and I'm not bad looking and I am as invisible to, I'd say 70% of the men. So it goes to show when women get older, it's their, their dating pool decreases. Time is on our side as men and time is not on women's side. The only thing that I would say to this video is that you were warned. See, leftover women don't really deserve any pity when they eventually get well left over. For years, you've been warned that winter is coming and that the wall takes no prisoner, but you failed to listen. Nobody cares if you look good for your age or if you're financially stable. Men don't give a rat's ass about those things. All men want is a young, fertile, beautiful, submissive woman to take home, which you probably were 30 years ago. But right now, you are all damaged goods and no man is buying that. In China, if you're a woman, single, and over 30, you are called 剩女, which means leftover woman in Mandarin. In Cantonese, you are called 老大长, 卖精姐, and 洗走啦, which means orange at the bottom of the basket, the sugar cane that didn't get sold, and the thing used for filling the gap of the stove. But if you're a man, single, and over 30, you are called 钻石王老五, which means a diamond bachelor in Mandarin. In Cantonese, you're called Sun Pun, which means quality real estate. Ha, ah, that was fun. Now let's cut through the sugar coating and get real. Sure, the terms leftover woman and sugar cane that didn't get sold may seem harsh, but there's nothing but truth in the perceptions behind these labels. And it's one of the reasons why marriages and relationships generally still work in most of these places. The pure truth is, in the dating game, Age works against women in a way it doesn't for men. Women over 30 will face tougher dating challenges because of biological clocks, previous dating trauma, accumulated emotional baggage, and shifting societal expectations. Don't get me started on the ones with kids. Men, on the other hand, are often seen as more desirable as they age, largely due to factors like financial stability and maturity. This is why the internet is littered with many angry, lonely and bitter feminists over 30 who chased their career but neglected settling down in their prime. Why are all men trash? I order this coffee, sit outside on a bench to wait. On the bench next to me, there's a pretty attractive guy my age. Suddenly, his six-year-old dad appears and he the son goes inside, okay? The dad looks at me and goes, hi, hi. Says something creepy like, you're the essence of Easter. Okay. Mm. Son comes back out. They're talking a little bit. Dad continues to talk to me. Stop. As they're leaving, the dad looks at me and goes, bye. Mm. You are a dirty, dirty dog. What's crazy is so many women that are hitting the wall have so much to say about how men approach them. But then if men are not approaching them, then that's also a problem. It's like men need to court me. Men need to lead. Men need to make the first move, but when they do, then they're called pieces of shit. And this is a perfect example. Why is he a piece of shit? Because the way that you wanted him to approach you, the way you had it conjured up in your brain, because he didn't read your mind on how you wanted to be approached, now he's trash and all men are trash. Make that make sense. I'm just at a point where I don't even think that women understand what the fuck they want because 
if men don't approach them, it's a problem. But then when they do, that's also a problem. And the solution is really that women should approach men if they're interested in, in them. But the reality is, is women are never going to do that because they cannot take rejection in the same way that men do. Point blank period, because women think that they're entitled to all of this attention and they can't even fathom being rejected. But it just is so embarrassing for the good women left in the world that women come on the internet and say all men are trash simply because he said something that maybe you found creepy, but laugh it off, get to know him, maybe ask for his name or his number. You found him attractive. And again, where's your initiative? If you found him attractive, you could have easily flipped it and made it a really good conversation and gotten to know him. But instead you decided to come on the internet and call all men trash. No wonder why you're single. Okay, bye. Ah, here we go again. Another day, another woman coming online to declare that all men are trash. So let me get this straight. You found the guy attractive, but because his approach wasn't perfectly scripted like some rom-com, suddenly all men are garbage? That's rich. And then you've got another woman chiming in, pointing out the obvious double standard. She's right. If men don't approach, they're weak. If they do, they're trash. How are men supposed to win in this game? Women like this make it impossible. Let's be real here. It's not about how he approached you. It's about the fact that he dared to approach you at all. You found him attractive, but instead of engaging in a conversation, you ran to the internet to complain. How's that working out for you? Because from where I'm sitting, it sounds like you're just proving why you're still single. And that's the thing. Women like this can't handle rejection. And they sure as hell can't handle not being approached the way they've imagined in their heads. It's entitlement at its finest. Instead of seeing an opportunity to connect, she saw a chance to whine. Maybe next time, instead of running to social media to bash all men, try having a real conversation. You might be surprised at the outcome. But nah, it's easier to just call men trash, isn't it? Keep doing that, and let's see how many more years you spend alone complaining about why you can't find a decent guy. Because newsflash, the problem isn't with the men, it's with you. I'm a single mama. I have to live in this space of survival and beast mode. Like I have to live in my masculine energy. And then when it comes to dating, men are always like, oh my goodness, like we're attracted to strong, independent women. But then they get with one and they realize like these women, us women, we're surviving in this masculine space where we, we, we don't have the capacity to get into our feminine and be soft and vulnerable and all of these things that a man wants and needs. And as a man, if you want us to get there, you have got to provide a safe masculine space. It's like women equate femininity to being lazy and having a privileged life. No, just act like a woman. Don't require something from somebody else to then be something. Just be it. It's like these women want something from men in order to not act like one. Oh boy, here we go again. A single mom claiming she's stuck in beast mode and blaming men for her inability to be feminine. Look, let's be clear. Femininity isn't a privilege. It's a state of being. It's not about waiting for a man to provide a safe space so you can magically switch off your masculine energy. If you're in survival mode, that's a tough situation but don't expect men to accommodate your life choices by lowering their standards or changing their own behaviors. Feminine energy isn't a switch you flip when convenient. It's about embracing a role that aligns with your natural traits, not something you demand from others as a prerequisite. This notion that men need to create a safe space for you to be soft is pure nonsense. Femininity should come from within, not from external validation or conditions. It's not about being lazy or privileged, it's about authenticity. If you want to show your feminine side, it starts with you, not with what someone else is supposed to provide. So here's the hard truth. If you're constantly living in survival mode and can't shift into your feminine side, maybe it's time to reevaluate why you're in that mode and how you can change your approach to life and relationships. Expecting men to cater to your survival mode while you demand they adjust to your shifting needs isn't fair or realistic. Not the first time somebody told me I look like Rihanna. So I remember it was this old lady, right? I was in the airport and she was like, Rihanna, you look just like Rihanna. I said, what? I said, really? 
you know, I had my shades on and all that. And then I was like, okay. And now I got that before on a work and then I got it on live. So there's a correlation here. Y'all can say whatever you want. Y'all know y'all here. You getting Beyonce? This one's a classic case of delusional self-image. Here we have a woman who's been told she looks like Rihanna by an old lady at the airport, and now she's convinced there's some sort of cosmic connection. Let's be honest though, just because someone throws a compliment doesn't mean it's reality. It's almost endearing how she clings to this comparison, but the truth is, there's a massive gap between self-perception and actual resemblance. We all love a good ego boost, but let's not kid ourselves about looking like a global superstar when we're more in the realm of everyday folks. Sometimes it's best to take these compliments with a grain of salt and a sense of humour. At least, it's good for a laugh and a reminder that our self-image can sometimes be a little off. Leave me alone. Why do you keep following me? It's honestly so uh, creepy and I'm going to call the cops. And that's why women yeah, can't go out in the world by themselves because of guys like you. <laughs> what? Okay? So you rolling. you have you have a thing hanging out of your car. What are you talking about? There's a literally a gas hose hanging out of your car. No one's being creeped. Oh. No, thank you. A classic example of how modern women's impatience and quick trigger reactions can turn minor issues into major confrontations. This woman jumps out of her car, ready to berate the guy who's been trying to get her attention only to discover that he was trying to alert her to a gas hose dangling from her vehicle. Let's be real. If she'd just taken a moment to assess the situation instead of immediately resorting to threats and accusations, she might have avoided the embarrassment of realising she was in the wrong. This knee-jerk response is a hallmark of the modern dating scene where people are often quick to judge and slow to understand. So, the next time someone is trying to get your attention, Maybe pause and think before jumping to conclusions. It might save you from looking foolish and help you handle the situation more gracefully. And so, people, we come to the end of another session with this seemingly unending absurd group of mentally suspect individuals called modern women and our battle to educate men to not fall into their traps. Thanks for watching and watch out for the next video.